Ariala Jill authorities, controlled by the military, are refusing medical checkups for former Prime Minister Imran Khan and his wife Mrs. Bushra Khan through their personal physicians. Mr. and Mrs. Khan are incarcerated unjustly by the illicit regime in Pakistan since the past 280 and 102 days respectively. Should anything happen to the two, the de facto ruler of the country, Chief of Army Staff Asim Munir, will be held responsible, as Imran Khan has already stated to the media while interacting with after one of his many jail trials. Pakistan Tehreek and Saf's court committee has issued a statement after its meeting on Friday. The recent press conference by the DGISPR has been rejected as unconstitutional, illegal, and contradictory, bearing extremely negative implications for the constitutional role of the Pakistan Armed Forces. The demand for an apology from a party which represents millions of Pakistanis has also been unanimously rejected. Pakistan Tehreek and Saf, especially its founder chairman Imran Khan, has repeatedly condemned the May 9th false flag operation while demanding high level judicial investigation into violent incidents, including arson, looting, and brutal killings of innocent citizens, and to hold the perpetrators accountable. The court committee reiterates its principled demand for impartial, transparent, and high-level judicial investigations into the incidents of May 9, 2023. Expressing profound sorrow over the heinous killings of innocent Pakistanis and Gawadar, the court committee has called for solidarity and compassion from the authorities, demanding strict action against the culprits and an end to the deplorable practice of security agencies meddling in politics, focusing instead on ensuring the safety of citizens. Tensions are escalating in Azad Jammu and Kashmir as police and protesters clash in the capital, Muzaffarabad. The Jammu Kashmir Joint Awami Action Committee, JKJ AAC, had called for a series of protests across Azad Kashmir against injustices, hefty taxes on electricity bills, inflation, and unemployment. The protesters are demanding to reduce electricity prices, wheat prices, rights of hydropower plants in the state, and declaring the state as a load shading free zone. Consistent with the rest of Pakistan, state brutality and heavy handedness can be seen in Azad Kashmir as well, where security agencies are using tear gas, rubber bullets, and water cannons to disperse unarmed protesters. Official sources from Pakistan's illicit government had indicated earlier, without giving any schedule, that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman would be in Islamabad on May 19th for two days. The the purpose of the visit was to conclude investment agreements worth $5 billion between the two countries. However, according to the latest news, the prince's visit has been delayed indefinitely. According to the Pakistani newspaper, The News, a foreign office spokesperson said she was confident that the visit would take place but had no schedule this far. Arab News reported that citing political uncertainty, the International Monetary Fund IMF, said on Friday in its staff report, quote, downside risks for the Pakistani economy remain exceptionally high, unquote. An investment from Saudi, if it happens, could play a big role in steering the illegitimate Pakistani government out of its economic crisis. The United Kingdom has revoked the visa of a Palestinian student after she participated in a pro-Palestine demonstration at her university. Dana Abu Qamr told Al Jazeera that the Home Office withdrew her visa, casting her as a quote, national security threat, following remarks she made at the protest last year. However, the 19-year-old law student says that her comments at the rally last year, which raised suspicion, were mischaracterized. At least 34,943 people have been killed and 78,572 wounded in Israeli attacks on Gaza since October 7th. Dana Abu Qamr revealed that she had lost 15 family members last year during Israel's genocide in Gaza.